Hey, welcome back to Barley and Hops. Um, I'm George. Um, look, we got another great one today for you. Um, this one's a little bit more advanced. Uh, and of course, you know, we've been messing around here in the shop, you know, doing as, as much as we possibly can. Um, as always, we say, you know, remember, distilling is illegal. Um, but uh, this is a science. This is an art. Uh, so we want you to be as safe as you possibly can. Look, give us a call if you've got a question. Um, we've demonstrated up to this point that we'll answer, we'll answer your call uh, as soon as we possibly can, or and some will be surprised, but we will call you back. Uh, and also leave a message, uh, send us a note, uh, follow us on Facebook, you know, all that great and wonderful stuff. But let's get to the meat of why we're here. Let's talk about temperature control in our still, or temperature control in any event, or in, in anything that you're doing. Um, but the, and there are many, many ways to do that. Now, wouldn't it be neat, and this is just to the top of one of our columns, but, you know, we've got the bung in here, and we usually put a thermometer there, and we're tracking that temperature because, man, we are really curious about that ethanol temperature. You don't want to get there at the right place, and it balances. We want to make sure our heat is perfect so it doesn't overcook or it doesn't undercook. We don't want to scorch. And, of course, we don't want to stand there and constantly tune up and tune down and do all those things. Well, there's one thing you can use is a proportional controller, which is like a rheostat, you know, and, and we've got those controllers, and they work extremely well, but you, you've still got to go in there and set them, you know, low, medium, high. You turn them up, turn them like a stove. You know, stove has low, medium, high, um, and that's what those controllers do. But wouldn't it be nice to have a device that does kind of like all that for you? Wouldn't it be kind of neat to have a probe that you put inside that same bung where that thermostat came, that thermometer came out of, and then we hook this wire somewhere and plug our heating or heating to it, and it kind of does it for us. We just tell it what we want it to do. Yeah, but the best part about it is, instead of being a rheostat, it's proportional. But there go. It comes the term PID. PID controllers. Let me explain something to you about these. PID controllers are very inexpensive. Proportional, integral, and derivative. Those are the three things that they use uh, to, to operate a PID controller, which is all solid state. Now, they are phenomenal, and you'll find them. As a matter of fact, you'll find some of them that are mounted in boxes like this. I'm going to mount mine in this box. Just, I'm just going to cut a hole in it, mount it in there, get everything right, so all i got to do is put it next to the still and plug into it. Um, but And I've seen these run. Look, you can find these on line and some retailers uh the, gosh they're like 260 300 bucks uh yeah i'm telling you and they're worth it they're absolutely worth it but uh, you know as he, as we always do here we're not cheap we're just a little bit frugal so let me share something with you here i've got this one is called the agplk uh agplek uh this is a pid controller comes in a box a pid controller with the thermocouple, which is what you hook and put in top of the column. Uh, this is your relay. It's a 25 amp relay, uh, which is plenty, plenty. Don't go anything lower than the 25. Um, and then your actual PID controller with all these pins on the back and places to hook wires and make it look really crazy. Uh, okay, I've got that one. Now these come in so many different varieties and styles. Uh, the, the instructions on this one are written in English, so they're pretty good. Um, None of them are great, but uh, that one's pretty good. This one's pretty good as well. And this one's the Inkbird. Uh, and Inkbird has done really primarily the same thing. They offer the uh, PID controller. And it's got just a, a little bit different connectors on the back. I mean, each one of these is just a little bit different from each other. Oh, wow, it's got a great little plate that uh, will help you mount it into the box. Of course, it comes with a thermocouple. And... This one comes with another solid state relay, 25 amp, so you, you're good to go. Now these operate on 100 to 240 volts, so it doesn't matter where you're going to plug this thing in, it's going to operate, and you don't have to tell it, it'll understand itself. These are smart machines. Now, um, I'm just going to set this aside, and I'll tell you, I mean, we've got another one here, this was the, uh, the, on RKC, uh, and I've got another one here, and I'm trying to think where this one's from, oh, this one's a Burma. Okay, the Burma. Now, now, all four of these that we have, and I've got one set up, but all four of these that we have all primarily do the same thing. Let's, let, let's talk about that real briefly so we understand, and I'm going to demonstrate one for you. When you've got a PID controller, what you've got is you've got something that kind of thinks on its own. Okay, watch this. Uh, let's say that our set point for our, our home temperature is uh, 75 degrees. 
Okay, so we've got our thermostat set at 75 degrees. Lo and behold, most of you don't know that our digital thermostats now have this technology in them. And the old thermostats, you know, the, the old ones that had the little mercury bubble in it, also had this technology, but it was manual and it was kind of analog. You had to sit, you had to adjust it yourself. It, there was a little small wheel that you could turn. A lot of folks don't know that. But what it is, is this thing figures out in addition, now, now your home thermostat doesn't do it. This one does something additional. Your, your home thermostat does the integral derivative. This one does proportional too. Okay, what happens is, let's say that it's, right now it is 65 degrees in the house. Well, you turn the heater on. So the heater comes on, and when it gets to 75 degrees, the heater shuts off. All right, and then the temperature starts to drop again a little bit. When it drops a certain amount, based on how yours is set, the heater comes back on. Then it goes off, then it comes on, then it goes off. So what you have is you really have cycling power. Now, your thermostats are a little bit smarter than that. This is a very, very archaic example. So what you've got, this is sort of like an example of plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, unplug it. And that's kind of what you have with a lot of control mechanisms on heaters uh, or heating elements. Uh, now, if, if you've got the controller, which is the rheostat, you, you know, you can turn it on and you're giving it like 60% power. So it's not on fully, but it's not off. It's just enough. And, you know, then when it gets warm enough, you turn it up a little bit or you turn it down a little bit. What I'm talking about is I'm talking about the cycling of that process where it's either on or it's off. If it's on, it gets hot. If it's off, it starts to get cold until it gets cold enough where you've told it, it comes back on. Now, the beauty behind the PID, though, is you have a, we've got what we call the PV perceived value and then SV, and this is pretty constant on all PIDs. And, and each one is a little bit different the way you set them. Uh, but this is going to be the perceived value and the set value. Well, we might as well tell it is the, the sensed temperature and the temperature you're looking for. So this will tell you what this thermal couple is feeling. So as the temperature changes, this will go up and down. The set value will remain the same because you're going to tell it. You go in with the buttons and you're going to set the set value. So let's say, for instance, our set value was 75, 75 degrees. We're going to use that just as a, a round figure. And our perceived value was 70. Well, after this, this of course will turn on until it gets to 75, then it'll turn off. What we have is we'll have instead of on off, on, off, on, off. What was going to happen with the PID controller is you'll have a flow of current. Now remember, I said it's proportional, integral, and derivative. So it is going to figure out how much energy it takes to maintain a certain set point that you've already selected. It's going to do it in a certain amount of time and it's going to derive that based on a lot of other factors. Now, there, there's a long mathematical formula for that. We, all we need to know is this thing works extremely well. Here's the difference. What happens is, is your PID controller will come on, go off. Not 100%. What it does is it starts to test the water. It starts to test the area. It says, okay, is this enough? Oh, okay. It goes off and it goes, mm, no. My difference between 75 and 74 is still, what's that? Four degrees. Hmm. Okay. Let me try that again. It goes on a little bit more. And it goes off. It says, no, my, it's still four degrees. It's still, okay. Let me think about that. Okay. After a couple of milliseconds, it says, okay, look, let's, let's go. We, they, it turns on. And it gets it up to 75 degrees. It goes, okay, great. I'm at 75 degrees. Let's turn it off for a second and see what happens. And it stays. Then it comes and checks. And it goes, oops, hey, it's staying at 75. Let's stay off for a couple more seconds. Okay, oh, wait a minute, it's quickly. It, look, within a couple of milliseconds, it's already lost a degree or two. So it's already now down. Look, it's, it's already now down. Ah, there we go. There's 75 was our set. Okay, yep. It's already down to 73. Hmm, let's give it a boost. Boop, it'll come on. It'll come on for a couple of seconds. Proportionately, it says, hey, let me, let me give you 30% power, see what happens. 
30% power brought me back up to 75. Oh, good, okay. So here I am at 75. Over a period of time, and it's a very short period of time because it's all electronic, as it starts to work, what you're going to wind up with is instead of a flow of the on-off cycle, you're going to wind up with this. And then that's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as it fine tunes. It will fine tune the requirement to maintain the temperature. So the whole time that this PID is operating, what it's going to do, and they're really, really neat looking. Um, what it's going to do, it's going to look, where's the set point? My set point 75. How much above am I? Oh, oh, just a little bit? Okay, let me give you a little bit and see. Mm, I gave you a little bit, you didn't go anywhere. Let me give you a little bit more. Okay, ooh, okay. Oh, that, oh, that affected you. Okay, good. Okay, now you're coming back in the line. Okay, good. Let me turn off now. Oh. All right, let me turn back on and see. Oh, okay. No, yeah, let me stop. Okay, okay, there I am. Okay. And then after a period of time, it's going to go, okay, here you go. Bump, gave you a little bit. Bump, gave you a little bit. Bump, give you a little bit more. But what you don't have is you don't have the constant cycling of, okay, here I am. I'm on. All right, I hit the temperature. I'm off. Okay, it's cold enough. I'm on. So th th that, hopefully that makes sense to you. So and these things are just, they're, they're very, very useful. And of course, they help you control energy, but uh, they're men, they're really, really neat when you share it with somebody else. Now, here's the beauty behind that, because we started talking about earlier, look, we are an economical brew shop. A couple of things here. Number one, I won't sell these to you. Um, there's a little bit too, there's too much liability that goes with this. Um, I, I, I will help you as much as I possibly can. Uh, I'll, I'll do another video on how to actually wire one up because each one of these are wired just a little bit differently, but they all have the same basis and they all do the same thing. Get online, 300 bucks, 260, 300, 350, depends on who you get online with and they'll sell you one. Folks, I bought a bunch of these so I could play with them and I could compare them and, and, and test each one. Uh, and I've worked my way through all of them. It's taken me a couple of months now and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with them. I'm here to tell you that I did not, the, the most expensive set that I bought, which was probably this Ink Bird, uh, this complete set cost me, I think, 26 bucks. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, on eBay, uh, and they, they, you can get them as, as cheap as about $13. So, they're out there. Uh, you can find them, have them order, send them to the house, uh, and put your own box together for, what, 40, 50 bucks. Uh, you can do that. Uh, you, in just a second here, uh, we're going to go over, and I'm going to show you how one of these works. I got one set up, uh, and it looks really archaic, but uh, it's just a good demonstration on how these things operate. Now, some of them, you can, you can turn them, you can adjust them, and make them read Fahrenheit. But primarily, they will all come set to read Celsius. So you might want to get used to reading Celsius, but if not, you can always adjust it to, uh, to Fahrenheit. Uh, if yours doesn't adjust, it's just that type of model. Each model also, um, and this one I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to explain, but uh, each model has a model number, and each one of these numbers means something. Uh, everything from the derivative control to the type of relay to the type of coupler. Just remember, uh, the K coupler is what you're looking for. They, these come, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, uh, couplers come in a bunch of different letters, and letters mean a bunch of different things. K is universal. Just, just make sure it's a K coupler. Uh, that's about all I can share with you right now. So let's move over, and uh, I'll show you what I've got set up here. And I'll just give you a real quick demonstration because it's very, very interesting. But remember, we're going to be able to place this in the top of our still, set our temperature, and we're gonna let the PID do the work for us and balance the energy necessary to keep the balance in our column. Isn't that unique? Okay, let's go, let's go next door here real quick and I'll, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here it is. It's set up. Um, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a view of this. Um, I believe it's right now sensing 29 degrees Celsius. And look at that. 
and I've got it set to 33. So there it goes. It goes off. Now it's checking and saying, okay, hey, was that, the, uh, was that enough power for me to get this thing up to where it needs to go? Yeah, probably not. Okay, let me think about this for a while. So it's going to go through some adjustment phase, and then it's going to turn the power back on. But it's trying to give a proportional amount of power, and then it's going to see if it's made it. See, there's the lights back on again. See, so it's going to see if that brings it up to the desired temperature or not. Now, it didn't bring it up to the desired temperature the first time, so this time it's just going to stay on longer, so it's going to provide more power. But if you'll notice here, and it knows this. See, it's testing. It says, okay, I've given it a lot of power. I'm going to see what happens now. Let's see if there's any change in that temperature. Well, there's not going to be any change in that temperature for a little while. So it sets there. So it goes through its integral and its derivative process. And you'll notice it's now 30 degrees Celsius in that glass. There it comes. So it comes back on. It goes, okay, we're still not there. We're still not at 33. So it gave it another boost of energy. And then it'll continue to do that until we can get that probe at 33 degrees, then it'll stay off. So as long, now we're at 31, we're back to 30, so it goes, whoa, wait a minute. Now, now it understands, it says, wait a minute, I, I just went down. I went up and then I went back down. So in, momentarily, I think that light should come back on, which means that that PID controller says, hey, it's time to give you some more power to get you on the road because you're just not where you're supposed to be. Exactly, see? And then that'll happen, that'll cycle itself back and forth. And it does it through a proportional amount of energy that it sends to it, it does it through an integral process, and based on a derivative. So it controls, it smooths out the control of your heater element. Look, I hope you find that as interesting and as fascinating as I do. Uh, but remember, you're dealing with 120 volts here, or 240 volts depending on, or 220 depending on what you're doing. If you've got a little bit of wiring experience and you understand, um, it's not that difficult. Um, if not, uh, go ahead and grab one and get someone who does. Look at this. See, it's really thinking hard now. It's, it's trying to get it balanced. Uh, and it's going to continue to work like that until it, and if it never, if the temperature never balances, it'll keep thinking through it. It'll keep refining and refining and fine tuning until it finally finds a way to get it to do that. So, that's what I have for you today. Oh, this is such an exciting process. So this is the science behind it. And this is a little bit more advanced than normal. So look, be very, very careful, please. Uh, enjoy your distilling process. Please, please be safe. Give us a call. Let us know what you think. Send us a note. We're going to answer your, uh, we'll answer your questions as best we possibly can. Uh, and if nothing else, look, you have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.